We have seen up to verse number 28. And verse number uh, 28 that we studied said, Seeking union by sannyasa yoga, you will come to me. So seeking union by sannyasa yoga, you will, you will come to me. Previously, he spoke about the devotional attitude that is necessary. Now, he's, now he is talking about the action that is necessary, the effort. And throughout Bhagavad Gita, if you have observed, we, Krishna uses various terms to indicate Karma Yoga. He will, he will not only use the word Karma Yoga, he will use so many words, but all means Karma Yoga. For example, in chapter 2, he will not use the word Karma Yoga, he will use the word Buddhi Yoga. Verse number 39 of chapter 2, he says, Eshata Vihita Sankhya Buddhi Yoga Trimam Shruno. There, he used the word Buddhi Yoga to mean Karma Yoga. Again, Yajna Karma, he uses to mean Karma Yoga. In this sloka, Sannyasa Yoga is being used to mean Karma Yoga. This is where uh, Arjuna says, say one thing very clearly. Don't keep. How can you say Sannyasa Yoga and call it as Karma Yoga? How can you say Buddhi Yoga and call it as Karma Yoga? Why can't you simply use the same vocabulary, Karma Yoga, Karma Yoga, Karma Yoga? It becomes it becomes easy for us to it becomes easy for us to follow. Krishna is saying, if I keep using the same word, it will be a lullaby and you will fall off to sleep. Using the same word is a lullaby. You know that, no? So what he does, he sees Arjuna so disturbed, so agitated, but still knowledge means he will he may be falling off to sleep. So what he does, he uses the word karma yoga to mean. So many words he uses. In chapter 7, he used Nishkama Bhakti to mean Karma Yoga. How do you understand that? Nishkama Bhakti, he, he used it as Karma Yoga. Elsewhere, Jignasu Bhakti, he will use it as Karma Yoga. Here, Sanyasa Yoga, he is using it as Karma Yoga. Now the question is, how do we how do we understand Sannyasa Yoga as Karma Yoga? And he leaves clues in the words. He leaves clues in the words which makes us to understand it rightly. He's not simply saying it. He, even though he uses it, there are so many clues he leaves. And using those, trying to understand those clues and understand, trying to uh, unknot those clues is what is called Manana Reflection. So this is the, this is the discipline of Marna. So here he is here he is using the word Anyasa Yoga Yukta Atma. Very interesting combination to say Sanyasa Yoga as as uh, as Karma Yoga. Normally Sanyasa Yoga means development of Karma Yoga. You do Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, you develop into a maturity, and then you become a Jnana Yogena Sankhyana Karma Yogena Yogena. Chapter 3, he said it very clearly. Initial stages, Karma Bhakti combination. Advanced stages, Sanyasa Yoga. Here he is saying Sanyasa Yoga as Karma Yoga. What is the clue that is 
left here for us subha ashubham subham and ashubham the phalam pleasant and unpleasant shubham and ashubham in the classic language is punyam and papam in the classic vedantic literature they it is it is the punya and punyam and 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 papam and this punyam and papam refers to what refers to all the karmas all the karmas all the karmas here is you have to equate it to all sanchita karmas because the sanchita karma the, the shubham and ashubham phalam where is it stored it is stored in the it is stored in the in the in the in the sanchita karma and by doing this action you are free you are free what are you free from you are free from sanchita karma you are free from punya papa karma all that you are you are free how how when you do proper action when you do proper when you do proper action you become become free so he says karma bandham bandha is shackles bandha means chain which you are you are you, you, you are you are tied with and here we saw last week itself the chain the shackles are not a visible it's not made up of any visible material it is made up of the invisible material the bandham is invisible material if bandham is visible material then it is very clear because the bandham is made up of invisible material so he says what is the invisible material the sanchita karma is invisible the punya papa the benefits the the uh, the the consequences of action is invisible therefore that invisible nature is that invisible bandham is removed by what not by avoiding action not by getting away from action but by bringing in the right attitude into the action that's why it is called not renunciation of action it is renunciation in action by bringing in the right attitude so in karma yoga what is the sanyasa component in in karma yoga what is the sanyasa component you are giving up something what are you giving up in karma yoga it is very very clear what are you giving up in karma yoga is renouncing the anxiety regarding the future that is karma phala so what are you giving up in karma yoga you are not giving up the action but something related to the action you are giving up what is it the anxiety regarding the the future now he says living in this manner as a karma yogi you become free now living life as a karma yogi you become you become free sanyasa yoga yukta atma it's a very big sanskrit compound word we are not going into that angle at all in this classroom we we, we avoid taking those taking those roots but it's a very big sanskrit compound word sanyasa yoga yukta atma all means is only this what in the same action you bring in the attitude of yoga and in the same action you bring in the attitude of sanyasa again in the same action you bring in the attitude of yoga which means karma yoga and you also bring in the attitude of sanyasa now what is it that you are bringing in the attitude of attitude of sanyasa renouncing the the anxiety towards the fruit what is the yoga component 
the yoga component is the offering all actions are dedicated to all actions are dedicated so dedicated actions without dedicated actions without anxiety to the fruit to put it very simply what does it mean dedicated actions renew giving up the anxiety to the to the to the fruit in chapter 6 you should know how to cross refer like this then then concept becomes clear that's why i keep wherever there is wherever it is possible i keep referring those verses where you can go back and and refer in chapter 6 verse number 4 he says sarva sankalpa sanyasi yoga rudascha uchyate and we discussed all this a lot but chapter 6 is a few years back we studied sir how do we how do you remember that how how can you expect us to remember chapter 6 verse number 4 and all sanyasa yoga sarva sankalpa sanyasi so there he said that man has renounced all all sankalpa and there we interpreted what the sankalpa means fancying the future having decided to having made plans to enjoy the result even before the action is concluded never ga we said that having made plans to enjoy the results even before even before the action is action e mudikla adukulla adukulla srikant mind goes into mind mind goes into enjoying the enjoying the fruits enjoying the results sarva sankalpa sanyasi yoga arudascha uchyate chapter 2 verse number 48 yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya so right through he, he talks about karma these are all uh, if you keep studying like all this then you know right through how he is maintaining the same principle words are words he plays around with he doesn't play around with the concepts he play around with the words so what did he say in verse number 48 chapter 2 there he says yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya is hello sanga they renounce some some association they renounce what is that association these karma yogis renounce they they don't renounce the ideal they don't renounce the goal they don't renounce the offering but what do they renounce they renounce fancying the consequences imagining the imagining and enjoying the consequences dwelling on the future therefore sanyasa in the context of karma yoga is very clear what renouncing you are not renouncing the action because you cannot renounce the action so what is it that you are supposed to renounce you are supposed to renounce the anxiety for the result how do you renounce anxiety for the result because it is said very clearly in the previous uh, in the in the in the second chapter itself it is said very clearly what is it what is it that is said there karmanyevadigaraste maapaleshu kadachana you have uh, as a doer you don't determine the result just because you just because you are doing something don't think that don't think that you are determining the result also having understood this the doer doesn't determine the result what does he do sanyasa yoga yukta atma this sanyasa this karma yoga if you practice this karma yoga if you practice 
this yajna karma and all if you keep practicing now i am using very liberally like how he uses buddhi yoga you can say karma yoga you can say yajna karma yajna karma you can say edhuk maati maati pesranga nu you can discuss in the group discussion but here he is using all here he is using everything everything like he, here he, he puts everything to together only how does a karma yogi matures into a sanyasa that also he has said earlier that also he has said earlier where did he say that famous verses tad vidhi pranipatena paribrashnena sevaya upadekshyante te gnanam gnanina tattva darshina so you do this yajna karma and all properly what happens you mature there so from from sanya from karma yoga you mature into a a sanyasa yoga and what is sanyasa yoga sequence like when over the sequence is very clear now what first you do karma yoga first you do karma yoga and in karma yoga what is in, what goes along with the 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 whenever we talk about karma yoga the other side of the coin of karma yoga is bhakti yoga so karma bhakti goes together you need not separately ask karma karma so what is bhakti you, you need not ask that why because from 7 to 12 he is bringing in this concept what is it bhakti means the attitude of offering while doing the action what is bhakti the attitude of offering while doing the action is bhakti this being bhakti yoga karma bhakti goes together now you do that what happens you do this yajna karma and all that swadhyaya so, yajna yajna is best according to me arjuna or uh, having said all that in chapter 4 he said in chapter 4 tadvidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya padekshyante tu gyanam gyanina tattva darshina verse number 34 what did he say there this karma yogi after maturing will go to a guru vengata chalo now this is storytelling now yeah storytelling where you should listen this part only don't take this seriously and all this is storytelling now after doing karma yoga properly and all that a student will go to the guru and the guru will assess whether you have done karma yoga and all that and you have matured properly having checked whether you have studied and matured properly and all that he will start teaching you jnana yoga that is how spiritual evolution this is how spiritual growth happens in this classroom what do we do we don't do qualification checking la kadave kedaya le we don't do qualification checking pannumna mudhala pesralukke qualification iruka theriyadu isn't it forget about the one who is listening who knows whether the fellow who is talking is qualified to do adave doubting le so what do we do here we don't do any of these things we can i know all we assume that we are all nachiketas and we give gnana yoga directly straight away we don't bother at all here you follow so in the sequence they go why gradually meaning gradually you gradually you go how do you go gradually you do karma yoga you mature and this maturity will take you to you do karma yoga this karma yoga will bring about an inner maturity with that inner maturity you go to the guru and when the guru gives you vedantic knowledge that just that goes in with in the mind that is not matured in the individual that is not matured any amount of vedantic knowledge will not make any any difference lack of inner maturity vedantic knowledge will not make any difference and uh, and what is vedantic knowledge vedantic knowledge that we are very clear ब्रह्म सत्यम जगन मिथ्य ब्रह्म सत्यम जगन मिथ्य जीवो ब्रह्म नापर दट इज ज्ञान योग 
ஓகே இது புரியலன்னா வாட் இஸ் ஞான யோகா அனதர டெபினேஷன் ஆஃப் ஞான யோகா நித்யா நித்ய விவேக விசாரம் திஸ் இஸ் ஞான யோக நவ் திஸ் ரிக்வயர்ஸ் அ இன்னர் மெச்சூரிட்டி தட் இன்னர் மெச்சூரிட்டி ஹவு டு யூ கேட் பை பிராக்டிசிங் திஸ் பை பிராக்டிசிங் திஸ் சந்யாச யோக யுக்தாத்மா you know story edu sonna to explain verse number 28 thus you shall be freed from the bonds of action thus you shall be freed from the bonds of action by default action is bondage by default action will produce a result there is no result less action impossible action will produce a result it means action will produce a result means we have a problem what is the problem we have action produces a result means liberation doesn't exist at all after that why because nahi kasit kshanam api jadu dishtati akarma krit you have to be in action constantly all the time for inaction is inaction is death it means what there is no such thing called liberation at all for which krishna comes and says vedanta comes and says no 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 there is a peculiar way of acting by which you will not be bound there is a unique way there is a unique method what is that unique method that unique method here is calling it as sanyasa yoga that unique method here is calling it as sanyasa sanyasa yoga That's why he says a compound word comprising two words with opposite meaning. That's why it's uh, to go into that elaboration requires some basic Sanskrit knowledge. We are not we are not doing that. We are not uh, we, we are not doing that. Sanyasa yoga yukta sanyasa yoga yukta atma. Yoga means doing. Sanyasa means. Yes. giving up yukta means one who is making an effort one who is making an effort to do one who is making an effort in doing and giving up one who is making an effort in doing while giving up and nu solla kudathu என்னும் <laughs> Vasanthi is saying, you are not my Guru, sir. My Sanskrit teacher is my Guru, she is saying. Uh-huh. I said, okay, what do I do? No. Vasanthi, no, no, no. She said that, no, Venkat. In public, she said that, no. Ganesh. No, 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 no. Yeah, you, you, you escaped on that day. You didn't come. Publicly, she insulted me that day. I'm still affected by that. I'm still affected. sanyasa yoga yukta atma it means what yukta means one who is making untiring effort yukta means one who is making that untiring effort so one who is making that untiring effort in doing while giving up so untiringly doing while giving up what is untiringly he is doing and what is it he is giving up as a beautiful verse and some words are very very interesting sanyasa yoga yukta atma this is verse number 28 verse number 29 padi verse number 29 padi samoham satvabhuteshu Namedeshyo stena priyaha 
ये भजन्ति तुम्हां भक्त्या महिते तेशु चाप्यहं समोहं सर्वभूतेशु नमेद्वेशो तिन प्रियह ये भजन्ति तुम्हां भक्त्या महिते तेशु चाप्यहं the same am I in all beings. There is none hateful or dear to me, but those who worship me with devotion, they are in me and I am also in them. The same am I in all beings. There is none hateful or dear to me, but those who worship me with devotion, they are in me and I am, I am in them. The Mari Mati Mati Pesaner, how will how will anybody how can anybody understand this Bhagavad Gita? Yeah. All beings are in me, I am not in them. All beings are in me, I am not in them. Now he is saying the same am I in all beings, none hateful or dear to me. But, but in another, Mati isn't it? Whenever they use the word but, it means you are going to say exactly the opposite, isn't it? He's a very honest person, sir. But in another, clear. He's a very wise person, but he's a very honest person. But you, know, you are going to say he is Dishonest. You are going to say he is unwise. So here he is saying, The same am I in all beings. There is none hateful or dear to me, but those who worship me with devotion, they are in me and I am also in them. With these kind of verses is where these kind of statements is what leads to the cult and fanaticism in devotion. The cult to groups and fanaticism in fanaticism and all arises because not knowing how to understand these kind of statements. Because he's saying, now he's saying there are two ghosts, he said. Two ghosts, but one ghost is general ghost. I I am in them. Like how I am in them. Like how I am in them. I can only one other I am your witness. I am just seeing them. And there is another ghosty, another group. What is that another group? My devotees. Who keeps saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. My devotees, who, who, keep, who, who keeps saying that? What will I do to them? There is a different relationship that I am having. Then, uh, what is he saying here? He always talks about two categories of people. You should know, you should know how to understand all the Shastric verses. You should know the Adhikari to whom that verse is addressed. If you can understand that, you will never have a problem in understanding the Shastras. Don't take the words, verses literally. Understand to whom it is. Understand the Adhikari. But sir, Ore Adhikari Arjuna Adana in front. Ore Adhikari. Only one person is standing in front. No, that is, that is Arjuna. Why does he have to keep? Why does he have to keep oscillating? Oscillating like that. The Dhyana Shlokas, it is said very clearly. Partho Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta Duktam Gita Amritam Mahat. Arjuna is just there as a, as a calf in the front. Mm -hmm. He is just there in the front. But he is, he is, it is not addressed to 
specific to arjuna it is addressed that the it is addressed in incomplete that is why bhagavad gita in every uh, shloka that we say at the end palashruti it is shreemad bhagavad gita upanishadsu brahma vidyayam yoga shastre it is brahma vidya and yoga shastra upanishads are just brahma vidya isavasyam idam sarvam yatkincha jagadyam jagad tena tyaktena punjita magrada kasya sviddhanam kurvan neveha puri le sir isavasyam puri le kurvan neveha karmani riji vishe shatasham samaha noor varsham keep doing karma yoga but adu kuda puri le the guru gets up and walks away Okay, there is no it is it is pure brahma vidya bhagavad gita is brahma vidya as well as yoga shastra so what he does here he keeps he keeps switching between the two he keeps he keeps switching between the two adhikaris the two levels he keeps switching what are the two levels don't say relative and absolute shankar purida రిలేటివ్ అండ్ అబ్జల్యూట్ అబ్జల్యూట్ నే పే చేయగడే అది రిలేటివ్ లే టూ లెవెల్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద టూ లెవెల్స్ జ్ఞాన యోగేన సంఖ్యాన కర్మ యోగేన యోగిన జ్ఞాన యోగేన సంఖ్యాన కర్మ యోగి సో హీ కీప్స్ ఆసిలేటింగ్ బిట్వీన్ దీస్ టూ ఆల్ బీయింగ్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ మీ బట్ ఐ ఎమ్ నాట్ ఇన్ దెమ్ హీ సెట్ ఇన్ వర్స్ నెంబర్ ఫోర్ సేమ్ చాప్టర్ హూస్ ద హూస్ who is the people there those who didn't even come into spiritual path they are lost in the world completely they are lost and the category you have in a relationship the relationship that i have with that category is i am a sakshi witnesser now people have now there now there is another group what is another group those who wanted to do this those who wanted to do this chitta shuddhi inner purification self purification self development liberation etc another group my devotees means not the one who says are krishna my devotees means one who is interested in one who is one who is interested in self development self realization again wherever krishna says my devotee it means the one who is whoever it is wherever it is a human being if, if they are interested in self development self purification self realization that person becomes my devotee my devotee means devoted to brahman because krishna is krishna is taking the stance of brahman and teaching therefore my devotee means devotees to brahman and what is devotion to brahman means then sir pudu god are there for clear brahma vishnu maheshwara three god itself is difficult now what is the fourth god devoted to brahman means brahman is not a brahman is not a god with form brahman is self development self realization self development self realization therefore he says those who worship me with devotion i am in them and they are they are in me there is nobody i hate but there are people who knows how to make use of my grace as he said there are people who know how to make use of my grace i have no specific i have no specific relationship with anybody but some knows how to how to make use of my grace those who knows how to make use of my grace is called my devotees prida konja complication no it's not that complicated but slightly a, a a different angle 
my grace all beings those who worship me or or those who don't worship me i am the same i don't do anything special for bhakta that i am not doing in that i am not doing it for non bhakta i shower my grace equally on on both therefore name dveshena nasti na priya asti meaning there is nobody who i have dvesha to there is nobody who i have love to up to this is very clear up to this we can understand it very clearly there is no problem where where problem comes in is when he says but when he says but only we get into a, a problem what is he saying those who are in me those who thoughts are in me all the time those who are in constant love with me ananya chinta even though they are doing everything in the world while performing their duties in the world those who mind is in me while as they are performing their duties their part of mind is in me they are in me i am in them when they say they are in me i am in them what does it mean they feel the divine presence they see the divine support they see the divine support they see the divine presence again divine presence now don't get into this mystical weird notion sir yes sir i felt i, I felt today suddenly i felt god for 20 minutes today la not in that sense srikanth they know that they are protected a sense of protection all the time what is the presence how do you feel the divine presence you know that you are protected as a divine presence are you able to understand what is divine presence means divine presence doesn't mean you get some some tingling sensation for 10 15 minutes and then and then get into worry and anxiety later divine presence means what divine presence means you know that you are protected how do you know that you are protected dharmo rakshati rakshita you are obeying the law you are following the law you are obeying the law since you are obeying the law you are following the law you understand that you are protected that is called divine presence i am in them they will feel me he says they will start feeling me they will start feeling me they will start feeling me na sadanna flutu pick up feather they will not see le adalla adalla hallucination if they see pick up feather and uh, flute and feeling insecure na krishna they are not feeling the divine presence they may not see the flute and the they may not see the flute and the peacock feather but they feel supremely secure when nothing around them is secure that is what he means by saying they are in me i am i am in them this is this is the this is what is meant by they are in me i am in them because previously he saying i am in everybody now he saying they are in me even though i am in everybody he where do they believe that yoga kshema is they don't believe that yoga kshema is me arjuna my devotees means they understand their yoga kshema is in me rest of the people believe where lies their yoga and kshema before class after class yoga kshema is in financial planning in the class before class financial planning after class 
because yoga and kshema lies there before class and after class in the class where lies yoga and kshema krishna va he says these people don't feel me i am not in them they are not in me i am not in them meaning there is no relationship at all we have there is no relationship at all we have and my devotees have a relationship with me what is the relationship what is that relationship that relationship is one of supremely that feeling of supreme security what is it supreme security because he says do karma yoga i will take care do karma yoga i take care correct his devotee means who trust that and do karma yoga not his devotee means what our assurance la kudukraru but will it work because i have seen people wearing worshiping the flute and worshiping the worshiping the flute and worshiping the peacock feather nothing is happening to them because we misunderstood devotees of krishna means worshiping worshiping the flute and the and the peacock feather it is not worshiping the flute and peacock and then rama's devotees should worship what bow and arrow shiva's devotees should worship the trishula i don't know what they will worship hmm? they have to worship the trishul saraswati's devotees should worship veena akshmi's devotees adu sollave vanu we know what to worship isn't it clear we know that we that we know mohammed's devotees what will they worship christ's devotees what will they worship and then there is a fight nobody is a devotee he makes a sweeping statement nobody is a devotee why because nobody is feeling nobody is feeling secure their yoga and kshema they still believe their yoga and kshema lies in the world they still believe their yoga and kshema is in that therefore they are not my devotees i will follow till now this is very very important in understanding what is meant by they are in me and i am i am in them they feel me i feel them they feel me forget about him feeling you we should feel him is more important for us yeah. we should feel we should feel and what is feeling here means i am equal to everybody i am equal to everybody i don't i don't i am impartial because the law is impartial when he says i am impartial the law is impartial correct the law is impartial i am impartial means the law is impartial because of their pure because of the inner purity they are able to see me the rest lacking in inner purity they are not able to see me though i am in them also and the inner purity becomes a very vital factor the problem is not where is god is not the problem the problem is to see god is the problem how to see god even though he is there everywhere you need a pure you need a pure mind the sunlight is there everywhere remember that example he gives in atma bodha the sunlight is there everywhere but only a mirror is able to reflect not a rock 
it's not the problem of the sun it is a problem of the reflecting surface purida vijay sunlight is everywhere sunlight is equally it's on a pot it's on the rock everywhere sunlight is not partial to mirror saying that i will reflect only there but mirror has a unique quality which others are not having what is that unique quality that mirror is having what is the unique quality that mirror is having it doesn't have its own image if mirror has its own image you can never see your reflection mirror means it doesn't have its own image that's the mirror correct right? photograph ko mirror ko adha vidyasa isn't it what is the difference between a picture and a whose ever goes in front of the mirror the mirror faithfully reflects that is what he says as i am in me they are in them don't think that as a god i'm i'm going to do any magic don't think that as as a god i'm going to do something and and change no i am not changing anything your devotion changes everything are you able to follow no he is not changing anything god is not changing anything god is not doing anything he is the impartial but in you there is a change why because there is the inner there is an inner purity there is an inner purity inner purity means no ignorance inner purity means what is impurity ignorance is the impurity correct what is impurity ignorance is impurity what is ignorance ignorance is two <clears throat> ignorance is two what are the two concealing and revealing something else technically it is called <coughs> avarna and vikshepa ignorance means two functions one needs it conceals it covers and then it projects so what is ignorance ignorance is that which conceals the reality and projects something else pure mind is free from this avarna and vikshep there is no concealing there is no re- revealing something else first aspect of ignorance is cover what does it cover it covers what does it cover the non apprehension it covers and then arises projections then arises project so covering and projecting covering and projecting only covering you cannot call it as ignorance only covering as in deep sleep no projections happens there it's only ignorance there it's only covering there as in deep sleep are you able to follow in deep sleep it is only covering but no projections there there is no you there is no world the moment you wake up projection happens what is a projection you and the world all this is because of the impurity ignorance the impure because of you caught up in this ignorance and impurity i am not reflector because i don't reflect in a clay pot i don't reflect in a i don't reflect in a rock i don't reflect in a clay pot where do i reflect mirror not that i am partial to the mirror 
sunlight is saying that are you able to follow now to those bhaktas teshu bhakteshu to those bhaktas i reveal myself and how does he how does he reveal himself how does he reveal himself he reveals himself in the form of security how does god reveal god doesn't reveal with the form and all god reveals in the form of security peace happiness that is god revealing itself god revealing himself or herself or itself i don't know what to call god this is this is reveal what so how how god reveals god reveals as peace god reveals as security god reveals as peace god reveals as security god reveals as happiness god doesn't reveal itself in a particular form why because all forms are his i can come in any form the prahlad he said i can come in he can come in any form because it wasn't a rehearsed to play no in the in the rehearsed to play they know where narsimha is hiding and and hiranyakashipu has to go and smash that uh, pillar only and narsimha can jump out that is drama in the original nobody knew nobody knew which uh, which pillar hiranyakashipu is going to break for narsimha to come any pillar if hiranyakashipu broken narsimha would have come why because he is there everywhere he is there everywhere he doesn't require any specific form for he can come in any form but then misunderstanding is god is that form so how god reveals how does god reveal god reveals in the form of peace god reveals in the form of supreme supreme security hmm? god reveals in the form of security see a secure person will not want anything insecure person will keep wanting something or the other it is insecurity that makes you to want why because having that you will feel secure ad illa nradunala insecure ad vanda security are you to understand bhakta here is secure why therefore the bhakta bhakta will not say i am secure a bhakta will say i don't want anything and we get mis- and we get uh, and we don't understand that language are you able to follow to the one to one god has revealed that person will not come and say i am feeling secure that person says i don't want anything we will think adepti okay he not want anything and then says bhavati bhiksham dehi how do you how do you reconcile with all these things so god is god reveals and how god reveals god reveals in the form of is security and happiness god reveals in the form of this hmm wherever there is prayatna anugraha is there that is another way in which god reveals wherever there is prayatna anugraha will happen that is another way in which you understand how god reveals wherever there is karma nevadika that's what he said you do it arjuna i will ensure that result i will ensure that result comes to you that is feeling the divine presence i know i have done the res- i know i have done the action and result will come when and how and all is his decision 
when it will come how it will come and all is his decision that is called surrender i do the action and i surrender so what is surrender here when the result should come to me how the result should come to me is your decision i don't decide that are you able to follow beautiful example it is like a house effort is the walls and the ceiling anugraha is the space again i repeat beautiful he gives this example one of the one of the later commentators gives this example space is provided already that's how you are able to build are you able to follow you are not building the space space is free already because of the free space that is available which is anugraha what do you do you build a you build a wall and you sit inside and keep looking at the television what mandos no mandosa mandosa yeah ha huh? something they said mandos mandos i don't know mandu mari irukudhu mandos ha 11 o'clock running commentary no 11 o'clock it is 50 kilometers from mahabalipuram now it is touched mahabalipuram now it is crossing all that you are sitting and enjoying where within the four walls built by you and the space is provided by the space that is provided so his role is done already you got to do your role his role is done already what is his role space is provided already his role is done already Hmm? Are you okay till now? Various ways of understanding the the same. There is no one in the creation who might dislike. Why? Because all are me. No, all are my creation. I created something, and how can I dislike what I created? But then, what is the difference between the two? Teshu chaki, Teshu means they, they also. I am in them, and they are. I am in them, they are, they are in me. god is saying i love you what you have to do in return you have to say you have to say i love you all of them yeah. god is already saying i love you you don't have to worry about whether god is loving or not the problem is i am loving god sir but uh, god is i don't know whether god is loving me or not how do i know for which he is saying don't put the cart before the horse god has already said i i love you all that you got to do is what reciprocate you have to say i i love you too nu solla kudad illaya too na vera edho seithukidona isn't it i love you too na anartham i am loving somebody and you also ha huh? so when somebody says i love you what you should say in return i love you too nu solla kudad you should simply say i love you yeah. i love you too na anartho the t w o can be t w o also isn't it and invariably it is not t w o it is t w o abina anartho prabhu i love you and i love somebody else also yeah <laughs> it's not it is not like that i it is not like that 
they are in me and i am in them they are in me i am in them means they will be able to see me they are able to feel my presence how are they able to see me how are they able to feel my presence because they are doing what what is supposed to be done security the sense of security what is called as dhairyam fearlessness that dhairyam i am protected come what may i am i am protected number 2 or edu nandalum it is for it is for good only whatsoever happens in life the worst the worst tragedy bhakta says for good only the best thing for good only clear why because in his grace all that happens is good only from his grace all that happens will be good only but we have a we have a specific uh, but we have a specific understanding of good according to me means what so when i say good it should be defined by by me i define what good is and tell god make sure this happens isn't it correct invariably i go and tell god this is good make ensure that this happens i want promotion god knows in that promotion lies your destruction therefore he will not give you promotion but then you go and say i asked for promotion because my goodness lied in my promotion and you didn't you didn't give me bhagavad gita class now would they taught us that you do this 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 you will bless me but nothing has happened this no whatsoever you do you keep doing and the doing will make certain will bring about a certain inner state in that inner state that inner state itself is feeling divine the inner state itself is feeling feeling that sense of divine this is verse number 29 verse number 30 भजते साधुरेवसमुराचार भजते मन्य भाग even though, even if a very wicked person worships me with unswerving devotion, he too shall be regarded as righteous indeed, for he has rightly resolved. even if a very wicked person worships me with unswerving devotion he too shall be regarded as righteous indeed for he has rightly resolved thank god he is saying this we understand we all have salvation thank god he said this yeah. otherwise he is saying do karma yoga do this do that it's looking so so complicated enni kadala aarambhi na panna porom Yeah, now he is even if a wicked person worships me with unswerving devotion, he too shall be regarded as righteous indeed, for he has rightly resolved. Yeah. So, what is the condition to receive the grace? Rightly resolved. It is a right. it is a right resolution it is a right resolution that is that is very important durachara 
Achara means discipline. Achara means discipline. Liya. Hmm? Durachara means Durachara means evil evil conduct. Sudurachara means those who have attained a PhD in that. That's not the meaning. Beautiful word. Sudurachara. Su Dura Achara. Abhi Priganwada. <laughs> yes. Achara Nale. Achara means discipline. Durachara means achara is conduct. Understand it like that. Achara is conduct. Durachara. Clear. Yeah. Achara Anushtana, we say no in the vocabulary. That is the, the that is the word achara. Durachara means evil conduct. Sudurachara means best among those who have this evil conduct. So, that is PhD Wang Irinda Kuda. That is past. I don't worry about your past. Have you resolved rightly in the present? If you have resolved rightly in the present, don't worry. I will take care. Oh. These kind of verses only gives us some hope. Isn't it? Sudurachara. He has taken the baby step. That is very important. The direction is set now. That's all he says. Once you set that, rest I will take care. Rest I will, rest I will take. So all that you got to do is what? Start following proper achara. Achara nale proper nadartho. But still we have, still we have to use it. Where you are doesn't matter. The direction that you are moving in is important. This is the law. Where you are doesn't matter. The direction that you are moving in is what that matters. Even the person like Ratnakarana Yargnidriyad, isn't it? Nobody knows Ratnakarana. Do you know Anshu? Looks like some uh, Maharashtra politician, isn't it? Ratnakara. Valmiki, everybody understands. It is Ratnakara that turned into Valmiki. Who's, who's Valmiki? Ratnakara turned into Valmiki. Siddharth, the prince, turned into Gautama, the the Buddha. Kaushika, the king, turned into Kaushika, the king, turned into Vishwamitra. One person in this planet till now got that word, Vishwamitra. Friend of the Vishwa. He is a friend of the Vishwa. Killing, plundering, highway, robbery is what Ratnakara was doing. Mm -hmm. One day Narada was walking and they, and they caught hold of Narada. And what will you get from Narada? Lecture. Yeah, what will you get from? You will only get a lecture. Yeah. In a hijack, in Bona, in Nagarigo. Lecture. Where in a good one? Lecture. So oh, this one I Ratnakara hijacked Valmiki and tied him to a tree. And he said, Give me what you have. Narada said, Illa pa, I will give you what I have, but do you really want that? No, no, no. Whatever you have, I want. 
and Narada started telling him. What did he say? You are going to kill me? Yes. You know, it's only the body dies, I don't die. Atrakara is used to people falling at his feet, pleading, in Utrungo, in Utrungo, leave me alone, leave me alone. Leave. Everybody is, he is used to people falling at his feet and pleading. And this, and this man is saying, you know, when you kill, you can't kill me. It's only the body that you are killing and not me. He said, what are you talking? What are you even? Even say, why are you doing all this? Don't you know what you are doing is wrong? Why are you doing all this? There is a family person on the side. Family no I will also be a sannyasi like you. Because I have a family, I have to, I have to do what? I have to kill, I have to plunder, I have to cheat, I have to manipulate, I have to steal. Why? Pratur. Prida. This is called Sudurachara. And Valmiki said, oh, 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 this is what Ratanakaran said. Narada told him what? Oh, family goes on the Mandri. Yeah. Okay. Go and ask them, will they share the consequences of this also? Go and ask them, will they share the consequences of all this? Katnagara said, obviously they will share because bonus vayangaravanga, papatha vayangamattangla. Isn't it? Huh? Inna bonus adhi? Performance bonus. Inna bonus bonus vayangla. Adhi inna adhi? Inna or bonus adhi mele, inna or bonus adhi mele, inna or bonus. Uriwe matta indra adhi 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 100% bonus. 125 you know, 125% bonus but people are giving they are taking inga onnu varamaatendrathu venkat he is also every day checking the account nothing is nothing is coming inside so ratnakara said why will they not take care they will take care they will share narada said check and come back i will wait adukulle ninga voting anna if you run away, no, 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 I will be here. Check. He went and asked his father, will you share? Father said, it's your problem. Your duty is to take care of me. How you take care? Consequences are one of them. I have nothing to do with you. So everybody said, everybody said, I will not take share. He came back very dejected. He came back very dejected. And said, what should I do? What should I do? He said, chant, chant Rama. Simply chant, Rama, Rama, Rama. Chant it will. And why this Rama? Now, Udane, not Ayodhya Rama. Va? Immediately we think Rama means we think that Rama and then we have to go to Ayodhya also now and we have to offer and we have to and, and you have to contribute to the temple that is built there also and go there. Ah. Ganesh. That is not Rama. Yeah. Namah Shivaya Panchakshara. Correct? Remove the word Ma from that. What you will get? Remove the word Ma. Narayanaya. Remove the word Ra. They, those are the Bija. In the Narayana, the word Ra is the Bija. In Namah Shivaya, the Ma is the Bija. You take Ra from there. You take Ma from here. You connect to both. What do you get? What do you get? Rama. Adha Rama Narth. It's not my original. Acharya told me once long back. You know, Rama Narth. He said, 
I don't know. Ninga nam jolno. How do I know? Take that because every you take that word that you take that akshara, the whole world, the whole word collapses. You 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 remove that word, that akshara, the whole the whole thing collapses. Pratnagara by chanting Rama 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 became a a Valmiki. Ananya Chinta, he developed. That's all. Are you able to follow? I will come and protect you. Even if you are a Sudurachara, I will come and protect you. How will I come and save you? How will I come and protect you? Previously, we said protection comes through peace, security and happiness. From another, another angle, we said protection comes through that. Now, what is he saying? Protection. The protection comes through. The Guru Anugraha and Shastra Anugraha. You will start opening up and reading Bhagavad Gita book in the house, which is there for 40 years. There. You will start reading that. It means the grace has come. Till now, it's there. Isn't it? Cover would open Bonamatan, Mr. Samir Raj. Correct, no? Yeah, you know, yeah. Only human being I know where he'll buy the book and not open the cover. Yeah. Raj, correct, no? The book of the cover one year ago, the few years. I opened the cover for him. So many books. Anugraha, that is called Anugraha. Daiva Anugraha, the Guru Anugraha, the Shastra Anugraha, the peace, the security, the happiness, all these are indicators that I am protecting you, I am saving you. These are all the indicators. Even if you are, even if you, you even if you are a Suduru Chara, huh, this will come to you. What? You will see a newspaper advertisement, Gita, Jnana, Yajna, and you will come. It happens, no? Something will happen. Why? You have taken a resolve. What is the resolve? With my current personality, I am dissatisfied and I want to become a better personality. That's what the resolve, that's the resolution. Are you able to follow now? A dissatisfaction with your current personality and wanting to become a, a different, better personality is the right resolve. Even if a very wicked person, Sudurachara, also takes this resolve, he too shall be regarded as righteous. Others may say, Gita class others may say, but Krishna says, I consider them as righteous. Why? Because the right, the right resolve has happened. What is the right resolve? A dissatisfaction with my personality. What is the dissatisfaction? As I am, I am very unhappy. So many qualities I am having, so many disturbances I am having. I don't want all this. I want freedom from, I want freedom from all this. That is wanting to become a better, wanting to become a better person. Most of the human beings thinks betterment means not the inner personality becoming better. Most of the human being thinks betterment means from under the tree to the mud house, from the, from the hut to the apartment, from the apartment to the villa, and where Dubai la villa you should have. Isn't it? I don't know why anybody will go to Dubai and have a villa. Unsure. I don't know. Why they will go there and have a villa? That is betterment, you no, know, sir. That is not betterment according to him. What is right resolve? What is rightly resolving? Rightly resolving means there is something, there is something wrong with me as a person, and I need to change. There is something wrong with me as a person, and I need to correct myself. That is right, resolving. 
even if a very wicked person says, I want to change. Immediately he says, I command, I, 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 I bless. Anugraha comes. In what way it will come? In any way it will come. What are the ways? Guru Anugraha, Shastra Anugraha, the sense of peace, the sense of secure, all this is what is called as I am there to I am there to support. I am there to support. Therefore, he says, even if a wicked person begins to seek the Supreme Self, he becomes righteous. Why? Because he has taken the right direction. The direction is right. It is not the number of times you fall, the problem is. Every fall, you don't get disillusioned and continue. That is righteousness. Again, I repeat. Righteousness doesn't imply you don't fall at all. It is not the number of times you fall that matters. What matters is how many ever times you fall, you don't get disillusioned and continue the journey. For that gets you the result. Invariably, what happens? They want result so fast, so quick that one or two times failing, they feel it as all the effort has gone waste. All the effort has gone waste. He says, you will fall, but you have a choice to fall like a golf ball or like a lead plate. Swamiji says, you, you, you can fall like a golf ball or you can fall like a lead plate. Lead plate mari unda na unda update that all ukondrongi. It will refuse to get up after that. What is golf ball? It bounces back. It bounces back. It bounces back. If you have taken the right resolve, opportunity to bounce back will keep coming again and again and again. That is where the that is where you start feeling the divine presence. That is where you start feeling the divine presence. Therefore, verse number 30, he concludes by saying, even if a very wicked person worships me with unswerving devotion, he too shall be regarded as righteous indeed, for he has rightly resolved. And what does right resolution means? The direction for self-improvement. The direction for self-betterment. The direction for self-improvement is right, rightly resolved. With this, we conclude verse number 30. And we will continue with verse number 31 onwards in the next, next session. Mala and Bharat have posted. Uh -huh. Bharat. Clarify the difference. Achara and Dharma. Correct? I think he's asking between Achara and Dharma. Or is he asking between Acharya and Dharma? Mala's question. Oh, oh. Huh? Bharat, Bharat, sorry. Yeah, Bharat. It is Achara and Dharma, no? Yeah, I think I made a spelling mistake. Yeah, yeah, sorry correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood. That's <clears throat> what I thought. I thought you were asking for the difference between Achara and, and Dharma. Dharma is the law. Achara is the effort that you make to obey the law, stick to the law. Dharma is the code. Achara is your conduct in line with the code. That is the difference between Achara and Dharma. Dharma simply says the code. Achara is the effort that you, that you put in to abide by the code. But this is the difference between Achara and Dharma. Are you okay? 
yes. Uh, yeah. we, so, no, thank you for clarification. Yeah. Now the question, which is yeah. why I asked, uh, yeah. if your if if achara is the way to uh, it is the action aspect of the dharma philosophy. Yes. Uh, overall guiding principle is dharma. Yeah. Yes. And the, <clears throat> then if it is uh, that, and then if anybody does a durachara, yes, that means we are not in line with the dharma. Exactly. Yeah. That. Yes. Yes, we are not in line with dharma. Correct. Yeah. So if if you are uh, if you are not dharmic, yes, then then yes. Uh, then the there is uh, the, then w where is the concept of even understanding the uh, presence of Brahman or anything which is truth? Yeah. Now that person in durachara sudurachara will not be able to understand Brahman. That person is that person will be able to understand one thing that as I am today, I am dissatisfied with my current status of my inner personality and I want to become a better inner person. That is achara. Again, I repeat achara means. He cannot understand Brahman and all because to understand Brahman, lot of achara, anushtana, and all has to be practiced. A kind of inner maturity is needed. Then only that person will be qualified to understand what the Shastra says about Brahman. But this person is also considered as righteous because the direction he has set from Sudurachara, he is starting to follow. He is wanting to follow some achar. The direction that he has set makes the difference. Following this achara for a period of time, he develops inner maturity, a, a clarity, a good reflective, he will become a very good reflecting medium. There, whatever the Shastra says about Brahman and all, that person can understand. Is this okay, Bharat? Yes, Guruji. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> I will come back to you on certain other aspects. But let yes. me contemplate. Yeah. On yeah. Yes. So, achara is to bring about an inner maturity. Understand it like Now, Mala. What is Mala saying? God does not stop those making a wrong effort. Why? He should also show his non anugraha to them so that the message gets imbibed clearly by all. Neither his anugraha is felt by those who making good effort, nor his non-anugraha is felt by those making mistakes. Array. How to understand this? Mala. In a Kelvi Purila, Nalum Badal Sulitra. Because Kelvi Purila, the answer I will give. Perfect. God shows his non-anugraha to those making wrong effort. He shows it. How is he showing it? How is he showing his non-anugraha? They are crying. They are weeping. They are in sorrow. They are in suffering. That sorrow and suffering and weeping and pain and misery is the indication that his anugraha isn't there. He is showing it. It's not that he is not showing it. He is showing it. Sariya, Mala. Ah, second question. Neither is Anugraha is felt by those making good effort. Wrong. It's wrong. Anybody who makes good effort, proper effort, Anugraha will be felt. It's a law. Ananya Sintayanto Ma Vejana Paryupasade, Esham Nitya Vyuktanam Yoga Kshema Mahamiham. They will feel their yoga and shema is taken care of by me. Sarvadharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Raja Ahamsa Sarva Pape Biha Moksha Ikshyami Mashuchaha. They will feel it. Absolutely no. Absolutely no problem. They will, they will feel it. Dhruvani Tir Matir Mama. Sanjaya, verse number 78. Chapter 18. Dhruvani Tir Matir Mama. I know it very clearly. What? It is taken care of. So there are so many verses where it is said. Very clearly, 
if a person is saying that i am doing good effort but i am not feeling the anugraha means somewhere there is a mistake not in anugraha in the effort are you able to understand wala because it is said very clearly he said he, he has said it very clearly chapter 4 he said it very clearly what did he say in chapter 4 what are the verses in chapter 4 this is 7 and 8 all famous verses mahabharata serial nale and the verses are there first isn't it he said it very clearly i am going to take care verse number ananya chintayanto ma now we study and then 66 chapter 18 sarva dharma ritya ma ekam sharanam vraja again verse number 78 chapter 18 where there is yatra yogeshwara krishno yatra partho dhanurdarah tatra sri vijayo bhuti ruvani tir matir mama the last verse bhagavad gita yatra yogeshwara krishno tatra partho dhanurdarah chapter 1 la arjuna eddi nigra He has left the Gandhi were down, and he is saying, "My knees are, my knees are knocking, my hand is shivering, my head is spinning." Arjuna, in the eighteenth chapter, Dhanurdharaha. Dhanurdharaha means he has he is holding his Gandhi were again back firmly, guided by whom? Yogeshwara Krishna. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Bharato Dhanurdharaha, Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhutihi. tatra wherever this combination is there what combination dhanurdara partha and yogeshwara krishna combination is there tatra shri bhuti vijaya all that will come dhruva nidir matir mama this is unquestionable it is said everywhere it is said you follow mala therefore he is saying that it is not that anugraha is anugraha will be felt by those who make an anugraha will be felt by those who make an effort lastly how to understand this did you understand now okay sir how do you feel the non anugraha misery sorrow suffering pain alha soha idella irunda anugraha isn't there where there is tatra sri vijayo bhuti where there is sri where there is vijaya where there is ananya chinta yoga kshema is taken care that is anugraha are you able to follow now mala but he but um, th- those people are not feeling who are not feeling i mean who are is in pain uh, something i mean that ignorance prevents them from feeling but oh. that also can god not uh, they are feeling pain and they are crying in pain no they are not in coma it's not that they are not in a coma state where they are not feeling the pain they are crying they are suffering they are desperate to get out of the pain and suffering no the pain and suffering they feel the pain and suffering mala you should all the pain and suffering nale feel pannadam pain If you are not feeling, then it is not. No, no. My my, my question is like 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 the like the state of Arjuna in the first chapter. Hmm. People in the pain, they continue to feel the pain without realizing what they should do to come out of it, and thus realize God's uh, non-anugraha. Yes, no kind of jasti pain. No kind of jasti pain. More pain. Some more pain. some more knocks and shocks that is pain. Pain. chakra went to the gada is not waking them up chakra will wake them up shankh chakra gada padma clear yeah. conch is saying wake up gada is saying wake up conch is saying wake up they are not waking up gada is saying wake up they are not waking up but definitely they will wake up when the chakra so we have to be 
you should be able to see the timeline and then you will understand the answer to this question you are seeing it in a short timeline to understand this you should see the you should be able to see it in the broad timeline then you will understand Yes, Venkatachalam. There is one more query posted by Mala. What is one more query? Explain the meaning and purpose of Bijaksharam in both Namashi Vaya and Narayana. Yeah. That I will take it up in some other context. Because that will take me another one hour to explain. But it's, it, it's, it's a beautiful mantra, these two. Some other context, I will take it up. Mala, just remember that and ask me. Some, I, will, I, will, I will take it up. My question is, yes. we have seen in this chapter yeah. verses from indicating only Brahman, yes. non-dual Brahman only, yes. and dependent reality. Yes. Then we have this verse talking yes. about devotee. So, yes. God Sanugraha. Yes. So, I can take this as realizing ourselves as yes. a true nature. Yes. A true nature in us comes as peace and yes. quiet. Yes, correct. So that's the only difference between a yes. true devotee and exactly uh, unrealized or a person yes. ordinary walk of life. Yes, or, ordinary, correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah, that is the only difference. The person in the ordinary walk of life versus the person in the spiritual path. The security, the, the sense of security they feel, the sense of peace they feel is that which distinguishes these two. Yes. So the, the devotee is one who has realized himself. Yes. That's yes. true. Yes, that is the truth. Correct. Devotee is not devotee of God. Devotee of God. It's not devotee of God. It's it's a path yes. where they realize that what they are seeking is what they are already. What they are already. Yes. It it will culminate in that. Correct. But here he's talking about an adhikari who has not matured to that level. How to how to get a person mature to that level? And then the duality will dissolve. Yes. yes, that will dissolve. Correct. Don't worry, I will take care, he says. That duality dissolving also, you need not, you need not worry. I will take care of that also. So right through, change your direction. All that he is saying is change your direction. I am going to me as the me as the tailwind is going to take you right through. Direction change upon the gunner or the. So there's one more question I have. So yeah. truly, in our in our uh, 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 daily obligatory duties, there's nothing like sankalpa. Yes. Because that is obligatory duty. There's yes. no sankalpa. So yes. any karma yoga has yes. no sankalpa. Yes. In the true sense of the term, karma yoga has no sankalpa. It is only saying thank you. It ought to be done. Thank you. Fully. It ought to be done, thankfully. There's no sankalpa there. Yes, sir. There's no even sankalpa the role, no karma yoga. Even the role we play in our life. Yes. You do it without yes. sankalpa. So without, yeah. Thankfully. Thank That's all because sankalpa implies invariably sankalpa is what? Something asking for? Correct. Something that is asking for oneself. Why do I have to ask for anything? That's why they say, even if you go to God, you don't even have to ask uh, God for Lokakshem and all. You simply do what you ought to do. He will, he will take. So, Sankalpa is non... Sankalpa becomes redundant to the person who has developed this maturity. Sankalpa is very important to a person who has to develop this maturity. So, it is meaningful at one level. It is redundant at another level. It is like using the thorn to remove the thorn. Remove the thorn. But then the second thorn is under the, the first thorn is embedded in your flesh. The second thorn is also piercing through the flesh. What is the difference between the two thorns? It's a removal of the ignorance. The second thorn is held by you. The second thorn is held by you. You know how much to you know how much to get in. And to take that thorn out and drop this thorn also. Yes. That's the only difference. Using the thorn to remove the thorn is the method. But what is the difference between the first thorn and the second thorn? 
the second ton is you your prayatna is the second ton so you know how how deep you have to go and take that embed that embedded uh, ton out as you remove that ton out this ton doesn't get stuck isn't it yes that's how it works sankalpa is like that okay okay thank you yeah we'll continue with verse number what was we finished 31 we'll continue with 31 numbers